Hello there, you're watching all 24 News World News Program coming to you live from Algiers. Next up, today's top stories. Algerian president chairs a cabinet meeting devoted to many sectors of endeavor. Members of the Algerian community abroad marched in support of the new Algeria's achievements, expressing their attachment to their motherland. Also ahead. Next up, the Libyan House of Representatives names its members to the Election Laws Preparation Committee. Also further in our news, China's Xi Jinping arrives in Moscow and President Putin affirms Russia's openness to discuss Beijing's plan to stop the war in Ukraine. And French government survives two votes of no confidence, yet Macron continues to face protests and strikes over his pension reform plan. Hello again and welcome to the details. First in our news, President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboon, chaired on Monday a cabinet meeting devoted to two presentations. The first on the supply or market supply of consumer products during the month of Ramadan, in addition to following up on the current situation of the Algerian community abroad. The meeting concluded with approving decrees that include appointments and termination of duties in high-ranking state jobs and positions. As announced in the headlines, members of the Algerian community in European capitals organized on Sunday a march to celebrate Algerian Victory Day, expressing their attachment to their motherland and hailing Algerian achievements made under the program of President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboon. Here's Zahra Frajani with more details. With the national flag waving on the skies of the European capitals, the Algerian community abroad chants slogans of support and pride of belonging to their motherland on the 61st anniversary of the Algerian Victory Day. The spirit of patriotism is within these women and men who gathered on foreign streets to express their attachment to national sovereignty. Today, on the Victory Day, we stood here to share one word, that Algeria should live and remain a unified country, on our flag that is flying high, and to say a word to the Presidency of the Republic, we're with you. Long live free and independent Algeria, glory to our martyrs, and sing in the national anthem. This is how the Algerian community members paid homage to their country, by waving portraits of martyrs from the National Liberation War and symbols of national resistance. This reflects the rejection of all plots hatched against Algeria and of the hateful and systematic campaign aimed at undermining its stability. It is an honor for us to flutter the flag of Algeria, a symbol of freedom. We're in Fabian Square in Paris. We thank all the friends who came from all of Europe, Italy, Spain, England and even Russia to convey the message of glory and patriotism. The aforementioned movement is a reminder of the Algerian nationalism. It intervenes in support of the ongoing process against the rabid campaigns that targets the symbols of the Algerian state and its sovereignty after its strong comeback on the international political scene thanks to the force of diplomacy of the new Algeria. Algerian Sonatra Group announced that its production has increased to about 190 million tons of oil equivalent during 2022, up from 100 and 
85 million tons registered in 2021. Reuters agency reported, quoting a statement by the Algerian group, that Sonatrach expects its production to rise up to 200 million tons of oil equivalent during the current year, 2023. Algerian Foreign Minister Mr. Ahmed Attaf received a phone call from his Mauritanian counterpart, Mohamed Salem Wild Marzouk, who congratulated him on gaining the president's confidence and his appointment at the head of the Algerian diplomacy. According to a statement by the Algerian Foreign Ministry, the call provided an opportunity to review the fraternal ties and cooperation between the two countries, as well as to praise the efforts made to build a solid partnership that benefits the two brotherly countries and peoples also to strengthen political coordination on regional and international issues of common concern. The Algerian Foreign Ministry confirmed in a statement that Mr. Ataf had received a phone call from his Tunisian counterpart, who congratulated him on his appointment as the head of the Algerian diplomacy. The same source stated that the two ministers seized this opportunity to review the relations and cooperation between Algeria and Tunisia, and the qualitative development they are witnessing under the high patronage of the presidents of the two countries. They also renewed their determination to intensify bilateral cooperation in various fields. Secretary General of the Algerian Foreign Ministry, Mr. Ammar Belani, renewed Algeria's welcome to the decision of Saudi Arabia and Iran to restore diplomatic relations between them. During a session of talks with the Saudi ambassador to Algeria, Abdullah bin Nasser al busayri he described the normalization of bilateral relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran as a positive step that would enhance security and stability in the region and improve the ability of Arab and Islamic countries to respond collectively and effectively to various challenges and risks, foremost of which is the Palestinian cause. On the bilateral level, the two parties stress the need to provide conditions that ensure the success of the important achievements recorded on the agenda of bilateral relations in the coming period. It was also agreed that the 14th session of the Algerian-Saudi Joint Committee should be held as soon as possible to explore new areas and opportunities for cooperation and partnership between the two countries. Algerian parliamentary delegation participating in the proceeding of the Second World Conference, Russia-Africa, stressed the importance of establishing balanced international relations. During its participation in this global parliamentary event, the delegation underlined the importance of multilateral parliamentary relations in building a multipolar world that is more harmonious and less hegemonic, and the importance of cooperation between Africa and Russia as part of fruitful relations and profitable partnerships that achieve peace, stability, balance, and development. Several hundred supporters of President Qais Saied rallied in Tunis on Monday to demonstrate their support for him after a crackdown on opponents accused of treason and corruption and to reject what they call foreign interference. In recent weeks, police have started to crack down on prominent opposition groups. Some of the evidence presented against those arrested in recent weeks and held in pre-trial detention on charges of conspiring against state security was that they had met French or American diplomats. <laughs> I went out today to support the corrective path of July 25th and to support the President of the Republic, who is from the people and wants to achieve the goals of impoverished people. Therefore, we want to denounce the criminals who abuse the people by withholding food from markets in a random manner and want to starve the people and fuel social conditions in order to achieve despicable goals. To a different development now, Sahrawi President and Secretary General of the Polisario Front, Mr. Brahim Ghali, continues his state visit to Venezuela at the invitation of President Nicolas Maduro. According to a statement by the Sahrawi Press Agency, 
The visit comes within the framework of perpetuating 40 years of diplomatic relations between the Republic of Venezuela and the Sadr as an embodiment of brotherhood, strength, friendship, and solidarity between the two nations. It will be also an occasion to strengthen cooperation, consultation, and joint coordination on various issues of common concern. The statement also added that the visit is also dedicated to two countries' status and their roles in defending a just world order based on respect for international legitimacy and people's rights to self-determination and independence. The Human Rights Forum took place in Buenos Aires amid widespread condemnation by many human rights associations and organizations in the Latin American and Caribbean region that are against the participation of the Moroccan delegation by denouncing its presence in the conference as parties considered the Moroccan occupation as a violation of human rights and as a colonial power that does not respect the resolutions of international legitimacy. The House of Representatives holds a session on Monday in order to nominate its members in the Electoral Laws Preparation Committee. As according to observers, it is the last chance to hold elections to facilitate consensus on the legal and constitutional frameworks for holding elections this year. Here's some minutes. The recent Libyan elections has seen a sense of ambiguity trying to reach a comprehensive agreement between Libyan parties amid fears of not seizing what observers considered as a last chance while the country and international parties are trying to search for options to get out of this continuous political issue. The Libyan House of Representatives is preparing to hold an official meeting in Benghazi headquarters to name the representatives of the House in the joint committee with six members from each House in order to prepare for election draft laws in accordance with Article 30 of the Constitutional Amendment. In parallel, the UN envoy to Libya, Abdullah Batili, defined the tasks of the high-level committee in which he proposed in his initiative to form and facilitate agreement on the legal and constitutional frameworks for holding elections this year. He also emphasized that elections in Libya do not only need a constitutional and legal framework, but also need to address many other issues to create favorable conditions for their conduct. Providing a safe environment for elections, ensuring freedom of movement for candidates during electoral campaigns, providing an equal ground for free and honest competition between candidates, agreeing to accept election results, adopting a code of conduct that everyone adheres to, and approving transparent and fair government spending mechanism, and finally, addressing any political or procedural issues that may arise. However, despite the effort of some parties in the country to reach the elections in order to help the country to overcome this political issue since 2011, and according to Batili, the conflict between the House of Representatives and the state, that may result a prolongation in the current political crisis and postponing elections on time will eventually represent a disappointment to the nation. At least 22 people have been killed in a series of terrorist attacks in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. Local officials said that the terrorist group killed at least 12 people in simultaneous attacks in several villages in Atur province, while other terrorists killed 10 people and kidnapped three others after that in the village of Nguli in the northeastern province of Kivu. The Zionist occupation forces arrested nine Palestinians from separate areas of the occupied West Bank and East Al Quds. According to sources, the series of arrests included three Palestinians in each of Bethlehem and Tul Karim, and three others in Hebron, as well as two Palestinians from Ramallah. The army also detained another young Palestinian man from the occupied East Quds neighborhood of Al Isawiyah. Meanwhile, four Palestinians were injured from Sunday night to Monday in an attack by Zionist settlers on a number of vehicles in the West Bank cities of Ramallah and Jericho. On the same context, dozens of Zionist settlers today morning stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in Al-Quds, took 
prov provocative tours of its yards and near its gates under the heavy protection of Zionist police. The Yemeni government and Houthi group said on Monday that they have agreed to exchange detainees after talks in Switzerland backed by the United Nations and the International Committee, Committee I'm saying, of the Red Cross. Yemen's Houthi group said it would release 15 Saudi, three Sudanese, and a number of other detainees in exchange for, for, for 700 prisoners from the other side of the Yemen conflict. announce that the 10-day meeting of the Supervisory Committee on the Implementation of the Detainees Exchange Agreement concluded today with a positive outcome. I mean, in the humanitarian line of work, we don't have often good news to announce. So today I, I will just, you know, with pleasure, repeat this, these words is that very soon 887 uh, detainees will be reunited with their families. Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived to Moscow on Monday as part of his two-day visit to Russia. The Chinese leader has been welcomed by the Russian President Vladimir Putin as the visit is aiming at discussing several files with the Chinese peace plan in Ukraine topping the agenda. Here's Osama Yid. Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived at Kremlin in Moscow on Monday for a first session of talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The Chinese leader is in Moscow for a two-day state visit with several files on the agenda. Dear Chairman, dear friend, welcome to Russia, to Moscow. I'm glad to have an opportunity, now in person, to congratulate you on re-election as the leader of China. For his part, the Russian President Vladimir Putin told Xi he viewed China's proposal for a resolution to Ukraine conflict with respect to both countries, as he also expressed his positive view on China's rapid development in recent decades. We have carefully studied your proposals on setting the acute crisis in Ukraine. Of course, we'll have an opportunity to discuss these issues. We know that you're guided by observing the principles of justice and respect for the basics of international law and divided security for every country. You're also well aware that we're always open for negotiation process. We will discuss all these issues, including your initiatives. She is the first world leader to shake Putin's hand since the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for the Russian leader on Friday over the deportation of Ukrainian children to Russia since the start of the war. Dear President Putin, I always call you my dear friend. I was very glad to receive your proposal with a state visit once again, let alone after my re-election as a chairman of China's Communist Party. China has released a broad 12-point proposal to solve the Ukraine crisis while strengthening relations with Moscow. Furthermore, Beijing has repeatedly dismissed Western accusations that it is planning to arm Russia, but says it wants a closer energy partnership after boosting imports of Russian coal, gas and oil. The Chinese long proposal has condemned what it considered unilateral decision of imposing sanctions on Russia, as it insisted on ending the war in Ukraine with respect to the two countries' sovereignty. For its part, the U.S. has not remained silent. Rather, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken denounced Chinese leader Xi Jinping's visit to Russia, explaining that the timing showed Beijing was providing Moscow with diplomatic cover to commit further crimes. Still with the same file, Russia laid out conditions on Monday for agreeing to any further extension of the Black Sea grain deal. And President Vladimir Putin announced that Moscow could send free grain to African countries if those conditions were not met. This comes a few days after the Russian Federation extended the grain deal 60 days after mediation by Turkey and the United Nations. Russia's foreign ministry declared that Moscow had decided to limit the extension of the deal to 60 days over what it called the lack of progress on normalization of domestic agricultural exports. If we nevertheless decide not to renew this deal after 60 days, then we are ready to deliver all the volume that was sent in the previous time to countries in Africa in need, from Russia to these countries free of charge. 
в эти страны бесплатно. And on Monday, North Korea conducted an exercise by simulating a tactical nuclear attack, coinciding with the joint military exercises between the United States and South Korea. For its part, the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, citing the official Korean Central News Agency, called for full readiness for nuclear attacks and the completion of the strategy of deterrence. President Emmanuel Macron's government narrowly survived a no-confidence motion in the National Assembly on Monday after bypassing the lower house last week to push through a deeply unpopular pension reform. Here's Marwa Bilayor. Two no-confidence votes against French President Emmanuel Macron's government have failed in the country's parliament, clearing the way for his hugely unpopular pension reforms to be implemented. Here are the results of the vote. Majority needed for the no-confidence vote, meaning the absolute majority of this assembly is at 297. For the adoption of the motion, 278. Since the needed majority was not reached, the motion of no-confidence is not adopted. The government triggered special constitutional powers last Thursday to push through the controversial legislation to raise the age of retirement from 62 to 64 for most workers, sparking a wave of protests and strikes across the country. As you could have understood, the hundreds of thousands of people who are now gathering together every day in the entire country since last Thursday and since Macron bypassed the Assembly will not stop just because this motion of no confidence has barely failed, just lacking nine little votes. Nothing has been fixed in the country, and the country continues to head towards a political crisis that Macron himself started. And while the government has now survived the motions against it, the anger against the reforms shows no sign of ending, with protesters gathering in central Paris following the votes. With one of the lowest retirement ages in the industrialized world, French government argues that the current system relying on the working population to pay for a growing age group of retirees is no longer fit for purpose. The born era is over. The reality is that the government is hanging by a thread. We're not going to say that they are no longer standing. The nine lacking votes were simply about who couldn't go with us until the end, who was ready to vote against the text this way, but who didn't want a dissolution because they are afraid of it. Protesters have criticized not only at the pension reform, but the constitutional power used to force it through. Enabled to gain majority support for the bill in parliament, Macron resorted to using Article 49.3, which enabled his government to pass the bill through the National Assembly without a vote. For more news making headlines around the globe, here is the news in brief compiled to us by our own Islam Singh. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan has asked the Chief Justice of Pakistan to allow him to appear for court proceedings virtually to reduce the risk of any threat to his life. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida met with his Indian counterpart in New Delhi on Monday. The two agreed to strengthen ties in areas ranging from energy, tourism as well as defense and technology cooperation. Thailand dissolved its parliament on Monday to clear the way for an election in May, a vote set to reignite a long-running power struggle between a military-backed establishment and a political movement that has dominated elections for two decades. <laughs> Vietnamese authorities on Monday seized seven tons of ivory smuggled from Angola, the largest seizure of wildlife products in years. Customs authorities found the ivory hidden in a container declared to customs as peanuts. Five children from Connecticut were killed in a very early morning crash on Sunday on a highway in New York State. Police believe the vehicle was being driven by a teenage boy when it veered off, hit a tree and caught fire. Millions of fish found dead in a river in the Australian outback following floods and hot weather. According to officials, low levels of oxygen in hot weather and recent floods caused the mass fish die off. Well, that's the end of our news. For more, you can always check our social media platforms. Thank you for keeping it here on our channel. Bye for now.